four personals. And he took with him 10 points. Kimbrough from the paint. Rebound Campbell. Batted around. And, and Hill with a rebound. But they call a foul on Brian Hill. And that will be four on the Baltimore native. Well, it might be time now to come back with Godfrey. Hill's got four fouls now. Look at the banging going on, Dean. There's some big boys in there, and Scott Hacker says, don't call it on Brian. That's the fourth Aces foul. Xavier's committed six. So the Aces will be in the one and one if they can draw another foul. Kimbrough can't get it to go. Watson the other way. Hill on defense. The basket is good, and we're tied. And Pete Gillen wants another timeout. Timeout, Xavier. 61 all, 10.34 to go. Dino, we've got a dandy. That's the first tie, correct, since 8.04. Nine straight points, right, since 24-24. That is our first tie, nine straight points. And Belcher Dawson is the guy that has brought the Aces back. He came up with a big rebound and got an outlet pass. There's been a slam dunk by Brian Hill in the nine-point run. Belcher hit a free throw, got, a, got his own rebound off a missed free throw, put in a bucket, and then just scored that one. 61-61 with 10 minutes, 34 seconds left to go here in the game. Boy. Well, just when it looked like lights out for the Aces, they have really light, lighted lit up Robert Stadium. Relace the shoestrings. The crowd's on its feet. Nice crowd, sellout crowd of over 11,000 here tonight. Again, we remind you, there'll be exciting basketball tomorrow. North Carolina and North Carolina State at noon. Then we'll take you to NBC Sports World for a wrap-up of the sports action plus some inside sports reports. And then it's golf from Palm Springs. Brian Tennyson, Evansville, and product playing in his first since he's got his touring card. Boy, those guys are lighting it up out there, aren't oh. they? Oh, what a great tournament that is, though, uh, as far as the charities and where the money goes. You bet. And, of course, if uh, tennis has got to feel great, if he can stay within the top 20 or 30 uh, for his first tournament. A lot of people that really know golf in the area seem to think Brian has the demeanor now. Uh, playing overseas makes one more patient. And he really has the demeanor to probably do well in the next couple of months on the tour. May even see him on NBC one Sunday afternoon trying to win a championship. 61-61. 38 seconds on the shot clock when Xavier will inbound the basketball, but 10 and a half minutes plus, 10.34 remaining. Mike Blake along with Dean Webster. What an opener on our TV schedule. Remember, a week from tonight, yes, young man, you'll be seeing it as we'll take you to Detroit. But right now, all eyes are on Xavier. The flare to Kimbrough. And the drought continues. Xavier has gone stone cold. Larkin got away with another one, Mike. He pushed off that time. Pete Gillen out on the floor trying to give some instructions. The, free, the field goal percentage now shifting in the Aces' favor, 49%, 42% for Xavier. Strong, up in a hurry. And now the Aces will bring it down with a chance to take the lead. An errant pass by Dawson. Kimbrough penetrates, and the drought is finally over for Xavier, their first basket in over five minutes. And Stan Kimbrough is the one that makes it, 63-61. Hardy can't hang on to it. Larkin, great body control, and he draws the foul. Larkin going inside. And the foul on Scott Hafner. That'll be Scott's second foul. Bad foul there as Larkin kind of shifts his way in. Scott making the body contact right there. And Larkin will go back to the free throw line where he's had his troubles this year. He is a 65% free throw shooter. I've got Larkin with 19, two in the second half. And Jim Cruz wants to talk things over with 9.34 remaining. Once again, you know, we... 
in talking about the uh, Beltra Dawson, it's ironic. Beltra was the only ace not shooting above 50% up until the night. He was one of the few that uh, wasn't shooting in double figures, of course, one of the two starters. But ironically, he's been uh, one of the hotter hands here. That's right. He has definitely come through. But even when he did have his, his uh, shooting slump, he did other things and, and did them well. And he, he ran the offense well. And he got the ball to Scott Hafner. And he got the ball inside to Godfrey Simmons. And, and he did the, the job on the defensive end. And he kept doing things that he was supposed to be doing. He hit free throws, such as Cincinnati, when he hit seven in the last couple of minutes to ice the game. So even though he doesn't score all the time, he still does the things that, that you have to do when you're in there. Uh, I know Jim Cruz uh, last game uh, with Wisconsin Green Bay said, well, I said, I thought Brian Hill played the best first half, but you looked at the stats and he had three points. He didn't have any rebounds, but he said, I just thought he ran the floor well, played good defense, and did the things he was supposed to do. You're watching Aces Basketball before a packed house on WFIE-TV, Channel 14, Evansville. The foul situation, Mike. UE in trouble. Godfrey four, Hill four, Simmons three. On the other side, for Xavier, Larkin and Kimbrough with three. Down the road again, we'll be taking you not only to Detroit, but to St. Louis, to Chicago for Loyola, also for DePaul, and we'll see the Musketeers again on 14 when we take you to Cincinnati. Going to the line, Byron Larkin is the fan, say number one aces. And here's the number one man for Xavier University, 6'3", Byron Larkin. He has really had his trouble shooting from the line in his MCC contest. It's even lower than his 65% percentage. It's dropped down to 57%. Larkin tonight now 5 of 7. We talk about his shooting lows from the uh, free throw line from the field in MCC play. He's up to 67%. And a foul on J.B. Barnett. And I believe that'll be Barnett's third foul. And the Aces will now go into the bonus. Nine minutes, 32 seconds left to go in the game. And UE will be in the bonus the rest of the way. They've got a Barnett for two. So the other Hill goes to the line. Ryan Hill having a nice night. He's got 10 points. His career high was here at the stadium against Valpo when he was great down the stretch, had 19 points. I'm sure the crowd would like to see him get another 9 or 10 tonight. But right now, both teams having trouble. Again, Xavier went almost six minutes without scoring. Their last basket has given them a two-point lead, 63-61. Hill posts up. Ball goes out, knocked off by Marty Simmons, and it'll be retained by the Musketeers. Boy, it is a battle in there. When you look at the size, Dean, again, there's some big people that Hill, Simmons, and now Chris Bamba have to contend with. Xavier looks a little confused on the offensive end. And boy, as you said, the banging really going on. Look at this matchup. Strong. And a foul on Derek Strong. Strong now has three personal fouls. So he gets into a little foul trouble. So we go to the other end. Well, Marty Simmons will go to the line. Marty, the leading ace, shooting almost 83% coming in. Scott Hafner, not near the 90% what he was a year ago, but he's over 81% also. Simmons looking for his second free throw of the night, gets the roll. Marty had hit 11 of his last 13 free throws coming in, so he was up to 85% during that stretch, so he continues his hot shooting from there. And he gets ooh, in and out. As we come down to the nine-minute mark, 9.05 remaining. Larkin right up the gut. And a foul on Byron Larkin, a big one. Pete Gillen better be careful. He is out on the floor again, out of his coach's box. And Simmons will go down and shoot the free throws. Do you bring Larkin out? I think you have to, don't you? Yeah. You got to bring him out. And they're going to bring in Walker. So they're going to bring Walker in. 
So nine minutes. Larkin commits his fourth personal. And it remains a 63-62 ball game. And now Marty Simmons will try again to tie it. Godfrey has been out his fourth free throw for over eight minutes now. He's been sitting out. So now Xavier strapped with someone with four fouls. Nine minutes left. Larkin goes to the bench with his fourth foul. Marty now four or five from the free throw line tonight. And the Aces have the lead. 64-63 UE. Jamal Walker. But Barnett gets it and they get to another 45 seconds. Kimbrough. Kimbrough again gets it back. Boy, they are stolen by Hafner. They are just stone cold. Great hands by Scott Hafner that time. Simmons for three. <laughs> Scott Hafner was running down the floor before Marty Simmons even shot the ball. He the had his fist in the air. The Aces build it to 67-63. A tremendous comeback. Barnett. J.D. Barnett. And it's 67-65. Eight minutes to go in the contest. Down to Simmons. Marty really putting on a show. You've got to go to the mule now. Here's Walker. And an offensive foul on Jamal Walker. That is not a good call. Pete Gillen is really upset. Simmons took a shot in the chops. I think he'll, he'll take that one, though. Pete Let's Gillen look. is really upset. Here comes again. Marty, you see, not set. He moves over, still moving. And uh, jumping Jamal picks up his third foul. So Walker, Strong, Kimbrough with three fouls. For Xavier, Larkin with four. And Larkin is back in at the 745 mark. Let's see if they don't set up a, a set play here. After this is Simmons. Simmons gets off his feet. And a foul on Derek Strong. Strong got his uh, fourth foul on that play. The Aces offense starting to click a little bit now. You see the momentum really shifting the Aces' way. They're starting to get some offense, some confidence in their offense. They're starting to go to Simmons. He's really starting to play well. You see Marty makes the contact. He says, well, if I'm going to get fouled, I'm going to put it in the air. Smart thing to do. Simmons will be shooting for his 26th point unofficially. And he gets it. Campbell will come in for Derek Strong. Strong's four fouls have all come here in the second half. So he's going to take a seat with seven and a half minutes left. And Marty Simmons at the line trying to stretch the lead. Can you believe this? To six points for the Aces. A tremendous comeback by the Aces. They trailed 61 to 49. They were down by more than that. Barnett for three. J.D. Barnett. Barnett has kept a minute down the stretch here. He's got their last five points. 71, 68, down close to seven minutes. 7-10 remaining. Simmons, great move, but couldn't get the shot. And a foul on Dexter Campbell. Simmons is really putting on a show. He scored the last nine points for the Aces. And you see, he goes in there, doesn't get it, has the presence of mind to stay in there, said, all right, foul me. I'll go to the back of the free throw line where he, on the evening, six for seven. Third foul on Campbell. Simmons now will try for his 28th point. The former Mr. Basketball out of Lawrenceville. 
I ran into his father before the ball game upstairs. You don't want to run into that man. No, he's large. And I said, Mr. Simmons, are you ready? And he said, yeah. And I said, is your son? He said, Marty's always ready. <laughs> Simmons with two more big free throws. Under seven minutes to play now. And Simmons has hit six straight from the line. Five points, Evansville lead. Down to Hill. Rebound, Campbell. a good shot there rushed it a little bit it has been quite a second half Hill on the turnaround Campbell gets the ball back and a foul on Scott Hafner or is it on Hill it's on Hafner I believe Mike Davenport number 20 is coming in Hafner with his third Bamba comes back to after getting some instructions. The Aces just can't match up pound for pound inside with Gottfried on the bench. The Aces just are really having a tough time matching up on the inside. That's Tyrone Hill's getting a breather now, so Xavier a little smaller in there right now. That's the sixth team foul. UE will, or Xavier will go into the one and one after the next shot, next foul. And a foul on Marty Simmons. That's going to be Marty's fourth. So now Godfrey, Hill, and Simmons for the aces, Larkin and Strong. You see Marty got over there. That looked like a little better call than uh, when Marty was set up shop the last time when they called it on Walker. So Mike Davenport, who just checked in. And we believe we're going to have timeout. UE, I think they're going to call a timeout. 6.15 on the clock, 73-70 aces. So who do you leave in and who do you take out? You've got you've got three, your your front line people all have four fouls. Godfrey's already on the bench. Hill is on the bench. Do you take Simmons out too or do you leave him in there? Boy, if you take Simmons out, it's very briefly. Uh, you know, you, you, you've got to keep him in. I, I expect to see Godfrey pretty soon. Uh, I think they're, they're another minute. I think the coaching staff is debating that right now. In fact, I think the coaches are trying to trying to talk to Jim Cruz maybe into leaving Simmons in. When you look <laughs> at the coaching staff, yes. They have definitely, I think for those of you who have seen the Aces, who are very familiar with them, but even those who are seeing perhaps tonight for the first time, you're looking at a ball club team that is up a notch. They're up a level. They're, they're for real, and they're a team that a year ago, a savior team would have buried Evansville had they jumped out to such a lead. Tonight, it's a different story. They're so mature. And that was a, that was a great shot of all the coaches except uh, Steve Bennett. He was in there talking to the players, the rest of the coaching, uh, coaching staff, having a discussion on how they want to play the last six minutes. They are in foul trouble. They've got a three-point lead. What do they want to do? Do they want to run the clock? Do they want to uh, keep Simmons in there? Do they want to set him down? A lot of options right now. And Pete Gillen on the other side, he's got the same problem. He's got foul trouble. His head man, Byron Larkin, the guy that runs the show, he's got four fouls. His 6'10 center, Derek Strong, has got four fouls, so he's in a little bit of foul trouble. So what does he do? Well, Pete Gillen comes back with Larkin, and Strong will stay on the bench. On the other side, the Aces will bring back Hill and bring back Simmons. So three players on the floor right now with four fouls. So going to the line again, Mike Davenport. The field goal percentage for both teams. Now Mike has really dropped off. The Aces just barely over 40%. Savior just under 40%, 39.6. So both teams not shooting particularly well. There you see what Mike Davenport is shooting into. And it works. Davenport cannot connect and it remains a three-point Evansville lead. Kimbrough working on Hafner. Down to six minutes. The crowd, the student body, has done a nice job of staying in the game tonight, Mike. Hafner, off the side, not a, not a good shot. Scott commits the foul at the other end. That's going to be Hafner's fourth. 
Scott a little frustrated, and uh, Jim Cruz just looks out at Scott and points to his head and said, you've got to think out there. Curtis Jackson and Tyrone Hill coming in. Let's watch it. Coming right at you, coming into your living room. And Larkin is just so good. Boy, Hafner reaches in, probably really didn't foul him. Uh, but anytime you reach in like that, they're going to call that foul 99% of the time. Especially when it's a, a player like Byron Larkin. So Larkin, who was having a little trouble finding the range, gets his first free throw of the second half. He had five free throws. There's type Brian Hill and Dan, Dan Godfrey. Both have four fouls. And we didn't really talk about Larkin's trouble at the free throw line that time, and he hit two of them. 73-72, The Xavier bench wanted a foul after that hit Curtis Jackson. Curtis Jackson gets his first field goal of the night. He was 0 for 4 going into that and finally gets it down. Larkin. And it goes over to the Aces. Brian Hill back in, Curtis Jackson coming out. Brian just out briefly trying to get a breather. We're down to 518. Hill's really done a nice job tonight, Mike. He's played both ends of the floor very well. Seven of eight from the field. He had a big slam dunk in the run that brought him back in it. His confidence level, as I mentioned, Dean, I think is up. He sure looked good the last Two, two home games ago against Valparaiso had a great game. Here's Veltra in and out. Oh boy, that one really went down in. Larkin takes it down, up and in. Byron Larkin. And it's a one point Evansville lead. Aces by one. 445. Scott Hafner, the Noblesville native, brings it down. The Marty Simmons for three. Big bucket there, Marty Simmons three-pointer, and the Aces back up by four. Marty over the 30-point mark again. The crowd now, as Barnett puts it up. After, almost had the rebound. Larkin, Hill gets the rebound. I think Hill may have hurt himself. Brian Hill is limping as he goes down the court. He's got a brace on the knee, and he's favoring the left leg. Four minutes exactly. Aces by four. Somehow, I don't think it's going to hurt these final four minutes. Huey trying for its 14th straight win at home, and their eighth this year. Here's Marty. Hill with the rebound and a foul on Tyrone Hill. And Hill looks at Cam Dexter Campbell and says, that's your man. Box him out. Chris Bomba giving the headlock to Brian Hill. Watch the position. You see, Campbell didn't box Brian Hill out, and Tyrone says, come on, Dexter, you got to block him out. Hill with good positioning there. But as we have talked about before, uh, Brian, not a great free throw shooter. He was only 10 of 18 coming into the night. 56%, and you've got a couple of finals from the MCC. Sure do. We'll see how Brian Hill does on his free throw. As Brian puts it in, we'll relay that St. Louis beat Butler tonight, 50 to 40 over at St. Louis. St. Louis 50, Butler 40, and Loyola beat Detroit 76 to 52. Brian Hill trying to give the Aces a six-point lead. Not really any surprise in those games. Again, Butler comes in here Monday night. They'll be in a foul mood. The Aces trying to be in a very euphoric mood as they play their conference opener against the unbeaten Musketeers from Xavier. Byron Larkin spins, twists, shoots, and it's in. Larkin just continues to amaze me, Mike. How he just doesn't even look that quick, but yet he spins and fakes you and jumps you and slides in there. As Jim Cruz says, he's got that very quick first and second step, and that's all you need. Well, that's all a player of his caliber needs. Simmons, and a rebound and a foul on Brian Hill. That's number five on Brian. That'll be, you ought to get a great hand. 
He's done a nice job. 13 points, Brian Hill comes out. What a ball game for the Baltimore Maryland product. With three minutes and seven seconds, he comes out of there. And he'll send the other Hill, Tyrone Hill, to the line. But you take Brian Hill out there and you put in Dan Godfrey, you put in somebody that can hit on the boards. And Godfrey, though, also has four fouls. So if Dan commits one, he is gone. Godfrey with eight points on the evening, three of six from the field, two of two from the free throw line. But right now, all the focus is on Tyrone Hill. He has eight free throws. But again, the... I think you got to go give those students a hand. Ball is knocked out by Belcher Dawson. You got to give those students a hand. They're, I think they're distracting the Musketeers. They're doing the job. 3:04 on the clock. Xavier looking at a three-point deficit. Good look there at Pete Gill, and he really up working his team right now. We have to get the ball into Byron Larkin's hands, and they have it. Here's Campbell. Dexter Campbell after the force and miss by Byron Larkin. Campbell brings it back. 79-78. Aces by one and the ball. Dawson goes down and a foul on Beltra Dawson. Ooh. That's a tough one. That one hurts. We're going to get another look at it. As Beltra picks up his fourth foul. Boy, and he picked on one of the bigger Musketeers. <laughs> Campbell set up shop in there, and Melcher a little out of control. Ran right over him. And now Dexter Campbell, who uh, started the first six games of the season. He also started last Monday against Detroit when he had nine points and three rebounds. Didn't get the start tonight. Derek Strong back in the starting lineup. He's at the free throw line where he shoots 64%. That's his 13th point of the night. Make it his 11th out of Brooklyn, New York. Campbell, who played well against Detroit, didn't he, the other night, came off the bench. He started 17 games last year, and he gives the Musketeers the lead. 2-34. It's 80-79. Xavier aces with the basketball. Again, Simmons with a great second half, over 30 points on the night. But now we're getting down to the, the game time. Hafner for three. Scott Hafner can get set up like that. He is awfully tough. Scott with his third three-pointer of the night. He has 11 points. 82-80. We're down to 2.05. Larkin gets inside. Up and in. We're tied at 82. Larkin had four people around him that time. And still got it to go. Fighting time at Roberts. Down to 145. Simmons gets the ball. Back to Belcher Dawson. Belcher has played quite a second half. And he's given the Aces another lead. Down to a minute 35. A 14-point lead. 84 to 82. Now they're on their feet. Timeout. Xavier. 125 remaining. They will have the basketball and they will be down 84 82. A lot of people staying up late tonight. <laughs> and a lot of people staying to the ball game late, Dean. I think a lot of them at, at, 15, at the 15 57 mark thought, hey, let's go to a movie. Probably a lot of them will uh, run home and watch this game on TV. We're glad you did. Again, remember. MCC basketball continues a week from tonight from Detroit. The Aces have a score to settle with the Titans. They lost a very important game last year to Detroit. That could have given them the championship outright. So UE will be going up there looking for their first conference win on the road. And we'll know in the next few moments if they get their first conference win here tonight. Well, they, they have played tremendously in coming back from a big deficit. It was overtime last year, and the Aces finally won it. Marty Simmons free throws with three seconds to go. They won it 95-93. This one still got a ways to go. You know, the league, in addition to Evansville being up a notch, I'm sure Jim Cruz, as you look in on the Aces huddle, Pete Gillen and the Musketeers 
did the conference proud last year, knocking off Missouri. Of course, scaring the daylights out of Duke. And now they're going to play Louisville next year in the Big Apple NIT. Well, I, I, you know, the whole league is, is really on the rise. And we've got some great athletes, of course. We've got uh, Simmons and Hafner. And Xavier's got guys like Hill and, and uh, of course, Larkin, who was probably maybe the best of all. Loyola's got Gerald Haywood, just a, a tremendous talent. And the Argyles got the beat. Pete Gillen takes a sip. Everybody sits a little more out on their seats. Some of them are standing. The Aces with a two-point lead now. 84-82. Again, a minute 25 as Larkin brings it in for Xavier. Twenty-five seconds on the shot clock. Down to Hill. Blocked by Godfrey. Big block. Godfrey with his 37th block of the year. He had 36 coming in. That's Big Dan's first one, and it couldn't have come at a more important time. Down to a minute 12. Again, both teams with the three-point capability. J.D. Bar J.B. Barnett has a couple. Here's Larkin. Godfrey with a rebound. Dan Godfrey clears it. We're down under a minute. 84, 82 aces, 40 seconds on the shot clock. What a big rebound that was for Godfrey. Godfrey, who has sat out most of the second half with four fouls, has a block and a rebound. Here's Dawson to the hole. Almost throws it away. Down to 35 seconds. Belcher didn't think he had the sure thing that time. Simmons takes it up. No good. 28 seconds. The shot clock is off. Larkin with a basketball. Takes it up. Doesn't get it. Scramble. And a foul on Chris Bamba. 18 seconds on the clock. J.D. Barnett, an 83% free throw shooter, will go to the free throw line trying to tie the game up. Good hustle that time by the Aces. They got on the boards, and even though Bamba picked up the foul, he was hustling as well. Belcher Dawson getting some instruction from the bench as he comes back. I think he wanted to know about a timeout. Right. Jim Cruz said, nope, not yet. He might have been asking how many timeouts. Now, you'll hear the, you may want to turn your sound down for a second. <laughs> Barnett is going to try to concentrate as 11,000 plus. Let's, they, see, let's see if we can get a shot of what he's shooting into. Look at that. That is got to be distracting. And that's the way it should be when you're at home. But Barnett rises to the challenge. He was the Taft High School MVP out of Cincinnati four years ago. Played a couple of years at Tyler Junior College. So now they're going to let him think about it. It's 84-83, aces by one with 18 seconds on the clock. And here's the Cincinnati coaching staff. Do you think Pete Gillen will have to send that suit to the laundry? <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to be his dry cleaner. He'd get some business, wouldn't you? His assistant's doing the job. Dino Quodio, Skip Rosser, and Mike Sussley, on the other hand. There's the Aces coaching, uh, assistant coaching staff talking to Jim Cruz, Steve Bennett, Will Ray, Kirk Starf, and, of course, the uh, the ancient one, Woody Wilson, the guy that has brought the big men along, has brought Dan Godfrey, of course, working with uh, Olaf Slob now. I tell you, those guys put in some hours. Both coaching staff put in the hours. They are to be commended if hard work is the ticket they uh, they're gonna have even greater success and it's evidenced here tonight the second sellout of the season win or lose Dean this isn't the end of the world tonight for either club it would be great for either team to win it particularly Evansville you, you figure you got to win your as many at home as you can but well, playing at Xavier's not going to be any a picnic. It certainly is not going to be. You figure it's going to be a three-team race, realistically, between Xavier and St. Louis and Evansville. That's the way you, you think it probably is going to be. But I'm sure Loyola and Butler and Detroit are going to have some things to say about it. But probably you're going to have to go in to a Xavier, and you're going to have to go into an Evansville and a St. Louis. And one of those three teams probably going to have to win two on the road, maybe, to win it. You always figure that you're going to 
you, maybe you've, you've got to beat some people that you're not supposed to and then hope that you don't lose to someone that you should have beaten. To win the conference, you realistically have to go into to the other two places and win one of the two. Okay, 18 seconds to go. J.D. Barnett goes back to the line. He was the Best Defensive Player Award winner for Xavier a year ago, but right now they're saying, J.D., we hope you have some offense. That's what Xavier is saying. The Roberts crowd is saying, put up a brick. And we're tied. He ties the game. Here we go. Larkin knocks it away. It'll be retained by Evansville. And now Marty cannot run the baseline. He has to stay on the spot. So Barnett can really apply the pressure. Again, Simmons and Larkin among the many, and Godfrey with four fouls. Marty splits it right up the middle. Gets it out to Hafner. Ten seconds. Eight seconds. Five. Dawson takes it down. Up. And a foul, I believe. They've got a foul on Stan Kimbrough, and Marty Simmons is going to go to the free throw line. For two shots. There is no time on the clock right now. Let's. As the buzzer sounded. Here it is. I think that's what, uh, boy, Marty talked about pushing off a little bit inside. Marty gets it, puts it right back up. There may be some time left. They're conferring. There may be a fraction of a second because I'm not sure I heard the buzzer. The foul was on Stan Kimbrough. There you see it, 84-84. And they... Jim Cruz wants to know, is the game over? I guess it is because they have pulled everyone back. And Marty Simmons, who is eight of nine on the evening from the free throw line. It's that ought to do it. Does he want to shoot his second one? The Aces have won it, 85-84. And we've got one more free throw to go. What an ending. He gets them both in grand style. Aces win it, 86-84, to and one of their biggest wins ever in Division I. Look at this crowd. With no time on the clock, Marty Simmons. The 11,000 treated to one fine game tonight. And I tell you, the players can't even leave the floor. Even though the Xavier players have lost, Byron Larkin is standing out there talking to Milt Donald and Scott Hafner and Brian Hill and saying, you guys played a whale of a game. You deserve to win. Both teams really deserve to win tonight, Mike. They did a great job. And there, Larkin, what a fine, fine athlete he is. Give Marty Simmons unofficially 34 points, but the ones they'll, they'll never forget is 33rd and 34th. Larkin, on the other hand, 27 points, both of them over their average. Dean, as we as we expected, it was a classic. 86-84, unbelievable. The aces were, and doing some high-fiving in the middle of the floor, the aces really looked like they, they were going to be blown out in the early, or in the late going the first half. An 11-point lead in the uh, second half. Early on, Xavier continued to pull out in front as they had a 58-45, uh, had a 13-point lead, but then the Aces came storming back, and it was really behind Belcher Dawson that, that pulled them back in it, and then it was Marty Simmons who took over down the stretch, and how fitting that it would be Marty Simmons to hit the free throws with no time left on the clock in the 86-84 win. That's, incidentally, I think you got to give Jim Cruz an MVP award, too. That technical, I, I'm sure it wasn't necessarily intentional. He really uh, felt very justified, but whatever whatever it did, the main thing it did is it, it turned this ball game around. It got the crowd off their duffs, and it got the aces. It got them alive. It was a 12-point deficit. Uh, you said it really got them going. 61-49, and then the aces went on a tear, and finally got back even uh, at 60. They took the lead at 64-63. So you see, they really came storming back in a hurry. So once again, here's how it ended. This is the shot by Beltra Dawson. The foul is on Tyrone. 
or on Stan Kimbrough right there, number 11. It was his fourth foul of the game. Then with no time on the clock, Marty Simmons went to the line and hit two free throws, giving him 34 points on the night. It has been a healthy Marty Simmons, and what a year he has been putting on here. What a season for the fans. And He's been living up to the billing. Certainly a big win for the Aces. They get their uh, first win in the conference. Their first game in the conference was tonight. Xavier drops to two and one, and they have no easy task as they continue on the road. Uh, big weekend for them as they will go now Monday and take on St. Louis, who won tonight over Butler. Well, that's our story for Dean Webster and all of us. Our thanks to our entire staff, also to Tom Iser of Xavier, but a special thanks, as always, to Bob Boxel and the sports staff at U of E for all of their thanks and help, and to Mark Canada for keeping our stats. This is Mike Blake along with Dean Webster. The Aces and a happy outcome here. Down 12, down 52-41, 11 at the half. Come back and win it with no time on the clock. Marty Simmons, two free throws, win it 86-84. to We'll see you a week from tonight from Detroit. Good night, everybody. you're serious about your chainsaw, you want an echo. Start easy, run strong. Especially if you're a little impatient like I am. Okay, grow, little fella. <laughs> That's it. Come on, come on, come on. All right. Echo, first from the start. Dilger's Garage, Mariah Hill, Indiana. Young Hardware and Furniture, Beaver Dam, Kentucky. And Lance's Lawn and Garden, Boonville. Indiana University Basketball on 44 WEVV is brought to you in part by American Cyanamid, makers of Counter and Squadron. The good people at Kenny Kent. Hardee's, we are out to win you over. Holland Dairy, all a dairy should be. Vision Express, for glasses in an hour. And by Union Federal Savings Bank. WEVV-TV, Evansville. Welcome to the 44 Afternoon Mofe. Today, Peter Graves, Pernell Roberts, and Catherine Justice Starr. Dead Man on the Run.
and what? Sometimes you think, okay, I give up. Take a murder rap. But then I think, how do I know the fuzz I give up to ain't one of them? You can't trust nobody, man. Nobody. Why are you trusting me? I talked to a buddy of mine. He said, New Orleans unit, your feds, straight arrow. Deal with the top guy, Stockton. He'll give you protection. Right? Yeah. How? We'll discuss that after we talk to the federal district attorney. Five eight five. Five eight five. Give an L check on three five Tango Golf seven four six. for a positive, but we took that off the body. Stockings. Okay, exactly what happened. We're still putting it together. Security, Mercer. Yes, sir. It's the old man. Dylan, 
Yes, sir. The loading dock? I'm on my way. Loading dock. Police say only Stockton's body was found in the car. That's right. What went wrong? Well, Leclerc may have been thrown clear of both the car and the barge and drowned in the river, or he may have escaped the accident entirely by some fluke. I don't know yet. Well, I have to know. I have phone calls to make to Washington. My friends are not going to be interested in any more excuses. Mr. Monroe, I told you, and you should have told your friends, exactly what you were buying when you bought me. You bought an assassination. And you bungled it. Governor Millard did not make it to the White House. Did he? Now, is there anything else? I can think of one thing. The accident we arranged for your son-in-law at the bridge could cause some waves in Washington. I can handle Washington. You find Leclerc. Fair enough. <laughs> unit has a guy coming in to take over for Stockton. What's his name? Gideon. Isn't wonderful? You two know him? I was his secretary. We worked together in the Chicago Bureau. He was agent in charge. What's he like, Fletch? Jim's a great guy. Meg, everyone you ever worked for was a great guy. Can I help if I bring out the best in a man? Maybe it's that three-pound marshmallow heart. When's he get here, Fletch? About a half hour. Glad to see you. Jim. What? How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Okay. Family okay? Oh, usual complaints, but okay. Well, they wanted four kids. You got them, huh? I got them. Uh -huh. well, we heard you were taking over. You couldn't believe it. No, no, I couldn't either. You know, you haven't changed a bit. What a nice thing to say to a gal who just lost 15 pounds. You know what I mean. You look great. Jim? Bobby to Moscow? Hi. To Moscow? And Rocky Flanagan. And Rocky, glad to meet you. Hi. Let me take these. No, no, I can handle them. You got a hotel reservation? Nope. Where can we take you? To work. The truck had been stolen, a driver split before anybody knew what had happened. Lab stripped it down to the axles. Nothing. Not a print on it. Inside or out. Driver must have been a pro. What was Stockton doing in Lafitte? Beats us. A meet? Maybe. What's that mean? I don't want to knock Stockton. He was a good boss. But? You knew him. You worked with him here in the bureau. Sure. On the Millard assassination. I don't know what he was like then. But with this outfit, he was a loner. Yeah? <laughs>
my case. No, it's in Washington. Tell Ex Hollander and have him send it. I carry it. Jim, you know the Millard case is closed. Yeah, very impressive. The Senator Ross's committee ordered the file sealed. Well, don't you two like to stir things up anymore? One condition. Hollander sends anything, you open it. I don't want any bombs going off on my desk. Well, you know my theory. There's only one way to handle a bureaucrat. You rattle his cage. Cheerios you can't do with most cereals. Pour a full bowl and get almost no sugar. With Frosted Flakes, you get 10 times more sugar than Cheerios. And Raisin Bran 8. Even Rice Krispies and Corn Flakes have more sugar. But you know what we like most about Cheerios? There's not a thinker in the bowl. The unthinkable taste. New Hamburger Helper Deluxe Chili versus Homemade Chili. Hello, dear. <laughs> New Hamburger Helper Chili starts with your ground beef. So does Homemade. Hamburger Helper Chili has hearty beans, authentic spices, and big chunks of peppers, celery, and onions, like Homemade. Won't be long now, dear. The judges, please. First, Hamburger Helper Deluxe Chili. Mm. And the uh, Homemade Chili? Just a few more minutes. New Hamburger Helper Chili. The shortcut to Homemade. Almost ready. <laughs> Who could ever forget the sound of a great fish feast? Now, Long John Silver's presents All You Can Eat, crispy breaded fish, a classic collection of golden hits that never ends. That's right, All You Can Eat for $3.49. You'll get big, big pieces. Fries, fries, fries. Fries, fries, fries. And much, much more. I'm in a crispy breaded mood. Available only at Long John Silver's, where the hits just keep on happening. All You Can Eat, crispy breaded fish for $3.49. Stay tuned. We'll return to Dead Man on the Run, starring Peter Graves and Pernell Roberts. It's simple for me to make this pack of cigarettes disappear. Now make your smoking habit disappear just as easily. Improved maximum strength, Cigarette is the only proven, effective stop-smoking program that is guaranteed to help you overcome the physical and psychological addictions to nicotine. With Cigarest, there's no hocus-pocus. You'll stop smoking in just seven days, without withdrawal, without gaining weight, without spending hundreds of dollars. You can make your smoking habit vanish. And it isn't as hard as you think. Over a half million ex-smokers have already discovered the powerful, safe, and easy-to-use cigarette plan. I gained no weight at all. I wasn't anxious. I've had nothing but a wonderful time learning how to be smoke-free. And with the cigarette program, I just did not suffer any withdrawal symptoms. I'd recommend it to my friends, to my family, to anyone who is interested in quitting smoking. It's easy. It works. Yes. <laughs> cigarette works. We have a lot of friends that smoke. Well, some of them used to smoke. They've, they're, they're trying cigarettes now, and uh, it's working for them, just like it worked for us. Cigarette is completely guaranteed to make you a non-smoker. If you don't stop smoking after using the cigarette program, we'll refund the full purchase price. Find a more effective, less expensive stop smoking program, and we'll double your money back. Guaranteed. So make your smoking habit disappear. It's easy. It works. <laughs> yes. Cigarette works. With cigarettes, you'll stop smoking in just seven days or we'll refund your money. Find a better program price list and we'll double your money back. To quit smoking, call toll-free 1-800-453-1234 or send 1995 plus $4 postage and handling to cigarettes. Box 4444, Carlsbad, California, 92008. Make your smoking habit disappear now. Call toll-free 1-800-453-1234. <laughs> Oh, 
Bobby Damasco had 11 years on the force. A lieutenant, robbery, homicide. Yeah, Fletch, I can get that stuff from personnel. So Damasco and Flanagan are veteran cops, I assume that. I want to know what makes them tick. Why did they leave NOPD? More important, out of the pick of the litter, why those two? You're out of luck there. The only one who had that info was Stockton. Stockton picked them? Yep. Did he consult you? Nope. Hmm. But if he had, I'd have said great. Why? Because Damasco and Flanagan are their own men. Guys who didn't have to forget a lot of crap because they didn't bother to learn it in the first place. Mavericks. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it takes one to know one. Look who's talking. Mr. Gideon, what a delightful surprise. Hello, Henri. How good to see you Here again. You. How long has it been? It's been two years. Two? Impossible. Well, we'll make up for it. <laughs> Lunch, I think I'm going to have a martini. How about you? Uh, yeah, fine. Two martinis? Excellent. Okay. Why do you want the file on the Millard assassination? I'm just covering a base. You think it might have something to do with Stockton's murder? I don't know, but I wouldn't rule it out. But the case is closed. Yeah, so everybody keeps reminding me. And the fact it's closed bothers you? Yeah, it does, Fletch. Why? They cut down Raul Delacroix within three minutes after he shot the governor. He still had his rifle in his hands. I know, I was there. So? I talked to three different people who swore they saw another man run from Jackson Square that day. He got in the car and took off. And all three of them independently gave me the same general description of the man and the car. 1969 light green Chevy. And I reported it to Stockton and he listened. Just listened, that's all. Two weeks later, he closed the case and told me to shut up or get out. Are you accusing Stockton of a cover-up? No, I'm just telling you what happened. I'm telling you that Stockton did not want to pick up on the fact that Delacroix might have had an accomplice. And that's peculiar. Oh, come on, Jim. You know, it's always like this. Kooks, nuts, publicity hounds screaming about some great conspiracy. It happened after Dallas, after Martin Luther King in Memphis, after Bobby Kennedy in L.A. Oh, I questioned those three witnesses myself, and they were not kooks or nuts or publicity hounds. I think there's something... Mr. Gideon, for you. Thanks, Henri. Gideon. Jim, Damasco. I just got a call from Sam Daggett. He's NOPD homicide. Says he got something you and Fletch might like to look at. Right, Bob. No lunch. Don't Photographing in an oblique light. Uh, eight six one five one two three. Stockton's private line. Your private line now. Got anything else? This. Lifted some prints. Come on to my office. V of I was able to come up with a make on the guy. Dude named Antoine Leclerc. One prior, two years at Angola. Released on parole. Present whereabouts unknown. Mean anything to you? Just the name. He was a friend of Raoul Delacroix. Leclerc and Delacroix grew up together nearby Eula Lafitte. Leclerc's name came up during my investigation. Delacroix stalked Governor Millard from Atlanta to Mobile to New Orleans, apparently waiting for his best shot. But he wasn't traveling alone. Leclerc was with him, and they were traveling in a 1969 light green Chevy. And Stockton knew this? Before I did but he insisted Leclerc was not in New Orleans the day the governor was assassinated. Well, where was he? Stockton wouldn't say. Said he had to protect his source. Stockton went to Lafitte to meet Leclerc. Did Leclerc set him up? Did the driver of that rig plan to get a boat? Maybe he did get him both. 
I don't believe that when I see LeClaire on a slab in the morgue. Is Fletcher's father Sebastian still around? Yeah. I'd like to talk to him. I'll arrange it. Thank you, Joe. Well, it's about time. Meg, call Libby Stockton. That's what's going to be convenient for to see him. Jim, wait. What's the matter? You got company. That's OK. I've got a suit on. Get in there. It's Hollander. Just flew in from Washington. Just what the hell do you think you're doing down here? Well, about all I've been able to accomplish so far is to miss lunch. But uh, somehow I don't feel that answers your question. You're damn right it doesn't. Request immediate courier delivery, complete file, reassassination of Governor Malcolm Millard, Gideon. Oh, uh, and you decided to bring it yourself. That's nice, Clark. Knock it off, Jim. Your sense of humor stinks. When well, you live in Washington, you ought to be an authority on what stinks. Yeah, Meg? Mrs. Stockton suggested 3.30 at her father's home. Thank you. I hold my calls. What's going on in there? I'm not sure, but it'll be fair. They each have a gun. What's the Millard assassination got to do with anything? Well, that's a big question, Clark. I suppose the answer is it has everything to do with what this country is or should be. Now, I'm not going to make a Fourth of July speech, but you know, you're like too many men who ask big questions and want small answers. All right, I'll keep it as small as possible. The Millard assassination has something to do with why Alan Stockton was killed. What? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. No, you're not. Why? Because Washington says so. Oh, come on, and who is quotes Washington? Gideon, within a half hour after your telex hit my desk, I had six telephone calls. And what did they have to say? Oh, you've worked Washington. You know how it goes. They just called to chat. How's it going? What can I do for you? Well, oh, by the way, how do you think that new man of yours down in New Orleans is going to work out? Six telephone calls, and you grab the first plane down here sweating and shaking. Because I know that there are more men behind those six, and other men behind them. Now, look, I don't know how far this goes, or how high. Now, back off, Jim. Forget the Millard assassination. Clark, the next sound you hear is 15 years of friendship being flushed down the toilet. You know, I've been out of service, but I haven't been out of touch. I've watched this outfit like a hawk. Because I wanted to see if the department really meant it when it said it was going to try something new. An investigative strike force that would hit and hit hard at the hell with who got hurt. No deals, no strings attached. Jim, just honest men doing an honest job. Guys kooky enough to believe that law enforcement doesn't have to be a bad joke. Well, I think it's a great idea. Only I'm a skeptic. So the first thing I did when you told me I had this job was to sit right down and write a letter of resignation. All you have to do is put the date on it. You can't resign? Then fire me. Less than 24 hours after you were appointed? How would I explain that? Well, why don't you discuss it with Washington? They're pretty good at hiding the truth. For oh, God's sakes, Jim. And if they're afraid I'll blow the lid off the Millard assassination, they better start digging some holes to crawl into. This one you don't win, Jim. It's too big. It's too important to too many men. You so much as touch the lid on the Millard case. Somebody will cut you down the same way they did Stockton. Swell. How do I get the file? No. And I'll just have to do it another way. I really appreciate you coming, Jim. It's wonderful seeing you again. You too. You too, Libby. Listen, do you mind if I ask uh, an official question? Well, of course not. Does the name Antoine Leclerc mean anything to you? Should it? No, no. I just thought Alan might have mentioned it somewhere in connection with the Millard assassination. I hadn't seen Alan in months. Didn't you know that we were separated? No. Things hadn't been going right with us for a long time. I'm sorry. Something had to give. I, Alan had his work, and I found myself just waiting around while he did it. I had to do something with my life. I tried lots of things. Finally, I took some art classes. Loved them. Took a studio, painted like crazy. I even sold a couple of things, I'll have you know. <laughs> Congratulations, that's good. Well. Maybe we can have dinner sometime when it's... I'd like that. Bye.
Wait for me in the study. Who is that in the station wagon? Jim Gideon. What did he want? To offer his condolences. Is that all? No, Dad, there is something else. He knows about Antoine Leclerc. Father Sebastian, he said you know where to meet him. Yeah. What time? Five. You still like beignets? Yeah, I sure do. And I'm starved. Yeah. So what's going on, Jim? About Alan Stockton's murder. What about it? There was another man with him when he was killed. He may be dead, too, lost in the river. But until I know for sure, I have to assume that he's alive and hiding somewhere. In the French Quarter? Maybe. Well, you got any leads? Nope, not a one. But you've worked miracles before. I bet you haven't lost your touch. <laughs> this is a small thing, but mine own. <laughs> you know my conditions, though. Ah, I remember, I remember. Absolutely no information given me in confidence as a priest. Uh -huh. That's very good. OK. So what's this guy's name? Antoine Leclerc. Why do you want him? I want him for two reasons. One, if he's alive, he may know who killed Stockton and why. And two, I think he was an accomplice in the assassination of Governor Millard. Whoa. Yeah, not the actual killer, but a backup man in case Delacroix blew it. You know Leclerc? No, but I sure know his name. How? Well, a couple of days ago, a guy came asking me the same question, where to find Leclerc. Who was it? I said he wouldn't give a name. Very quick with a $1,000 contribution, though, but no name. Yeah, there's something going on in the quarter, Jim. A group of guys have moved in. Like this dude. It's in Las Vegas for NBC News. Well, that's our newscast for this evening. Thanks for watching us. Don't forget, coming up next, Aces Basketball. We'll see you at 10. Aces are hot and on the road to an MCC championship. Help keep the momentum going by hitting the road with the Aces. For just $130, you can travel to Cincinnati to root the Aces to victory over the Musketeers of Xavier University and bring home the MCC title. You'll enjoy round-trip transportation in a comfortable, luxurious motor coach with free refreshments en route. Deluxe accommodations for two at Cincinnati's premier hotel, the Pop Omni Netherlands, plus your game tickets for two. Reservations must be made now. Send us the names of those attending, address, phone number, and a check or money order for $130. Mail to Aces Road Trip, P.O. Box 1414, Evansville, Indiana, 47701. Please, no cash, no phone call, double occupancy only, no meals provided. The Aces need your support on the road. So mail today, that's $130, in your name, address, and phone number. Send to Aces Road Trip, P.O. Box 1414, Evansville, Indiana, 47701. Go to Xavier with the Aces. The status of the United Mine Workers contract. Monday on Newswatch at 5. from Callahan Hall on the campus of the University of Detroit. It's University of Evansville basketball. Tonight's exciting game between the Purple Aces and the Titans of Detroit is brought to you in part by Old National Bank, your bank for life. D. Patrick, where the world's great cars are. King's Superstore, 4225 East Morgan in Evansville. Ford and your local Ford dealers. 
Robert John and Associates, Attorneys at Law. And by Keister's, your hardware store and more. As the Evansville Aces take the court, the question's asked, just how good are these guys from Evansville? So far, they've been very good, but tonight it's a different story. They're on the road in their first conference game and playing a team that is very, very hungry for a win. Hi, everybody. Mike Blake along with Dean Webster. Nice to have you with us. Dean, 1-15 and 15 are the Titans of Detroit who are coming out. They're not that bad, are they? No, they're not really. Uh, what happened to us here last year, the Aces came in and they had a chance of winning the conference outright, and against the team, maybe they took too lightly and they came away with a six-point loss and just a share of the conference the aces don't want to stub their toe tonight against the one and 15 team that just got their first win about a week and a half ago they come in they've had a little problems they've had a coaching change in mid-year don seco the guy that's been here for so many years stepped down now john mulroy is heading the titan program and the aces now just have to come in do their work and get out of here with a win Two names we'll be telling you a lot about, Archie Tullis and a freshman, Darian McKinney. They're very good, aren't they? Tullis is excellent. Tullis uh, had a little trouble from the field against us last year here in Callahan Hall, but hit 14 out of 14 free throws. He is the nation's leading free throw shooter this year, so if he's not doing it from the field, he can always go to the free throw line and kill you, but he's a good shooter, too, and he's picked it up a little bit this year. And of course, McKinney, big kid and just a freshman, growing pains, but uh, he's growing quickly. That's right. He, he's going to be in action. Uh, they've had a little problem with the starting lineup trying to get that right five but now they think they've got it we're ready for a good game tonight there's one ace who probably won't play tonight Olaf Flop we'll tell you about that we'll have the introduction of the starting lineups live from Detroit in just a moment has just gotten bigger at your Ford dealer. But only for a limited time. Get a $400 rebate on Ford Escort. Add a factory option package and save over $1,000. Or get a $750 rebate on Ford Taurus. Then save over $1,300 when you add an option package. There's even a $1,000 rebate on Turbo Thunderbird. Add a super option package and save over $2,000. But it all ends soon. The great rebates of 88. Get them where quality is standard. Your Ford dealer. Dave Lennox. Since 1895, hard at work with new ideas in heating and cooling. And now, get 0% financing and $100 cash rebate on the efficient Lennox Pulse Gas Furnace. Call your independent Lennox dealer. Have you been considering installing a new heating system? If you have, then call AirRight Heating and Cooling. We can install an efficient system in your home that will save you money. And don't forget our 777 service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days a week. a boy, Dave. Southern Indiana Tire is SIT, service, integrity, and tires. The different tire store for great values on the Michelin X8 with exceptional wet surface traction. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. And if the Michelin or other passenger car tire you purchase from SIT becomes unserviceable under normal driving conditions during the first year or 12,000 miles, SIT will replace it absolutely free. That's the no-hassle warranty only from SIT, service, integrity, and tires. Of course, 2-0, they're in first place in the MCC, having beaten Xavier and Butler. Detroit, three losses and three starts. They've lost at Butler, Xavier, and at Loyola. They're at home tonight for the first time. We're ready for the introduction of the starting lineups. For that, we go to the floor announcer here at Callahan Hall, Mr. Tom Ryan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Callahan Hall on the campus of the University of Detroit for tonight's NCAA basketball game between the University of Evansville and the Titans of the University of Detroit. And now, here are the starting lineups for Evansville. At forward, number 50, Marty Simmons. At forward, number 42, Brian Hill. At center, number 53, Dan Godfrey. Six 
foot six, sophomore number 33, Paul Williams. At forward, a six foot six freshman number 43, Darian McKinney. At center, a six foot ten junior number 52, Stacy Johnson. with four, senior number four, Marvin Owen. And at guard, a six foot three, senior number 14, Archie Tullet. A head coach of the Titans, John Mulroy. Okay, let's take a look. For the ace of starting five, again, there, it's a well-oiled machine at the moment, Gene. It's a good quintet that's been in there the last few games. They played real, real, real well on this streak of uh, eight straight wins, looking for number nine tonight. A uh, little different lineup for Detroit. They got uh, Williams in there. Weren't, wasn't sure if they were going to start Williams or Kennedy tonight. Uh, Hafner will pick up, we are told, by the coaching staff, Tullis in the early going, and it will be Hill on McKinney. Those will be two matchups that you'll want to watch. Uh, I got a feeling that Williams is getting the start based on his defense tonight, and he will probably pick up Simmons off the bat for the Titans. Okay, we're ready to go. We'll give you the officials in a few moments. This is Joe Kovillich throwing it up. Dan Gottfried and Stacey Johnson go up, and it goes to the Aces. Evansville coming in averaging 85 points and shooting a very fine 55 plus points plus per game. That is third best in the country. Godfrey looking for help. This is Simmons. And a whistle. Turnover. It'll go now back to Detroit. Detroit is in the midst of starting an eight-game homestand. They have had 13 different starting lineups. Paul Williams with the ball right now has started the last two as the ball is kicked away by Evansville. It'll be Detroit's ball. Reset the 45-second uh, clock. Anytime there's a kicked ball, they'll reset the 45, so the Titans will have 45 seconds, a new 45 seconds. Down low to McKinney, and it's knocked away by Brian Hill. John Mulroy, just before the game, told me he, think, he thought McKinney was the best young talent in the league. He thought he was the best big man until he saw Kenny Miller of Loyola. Now he says he's in the top two. <laughs> But McKinney has had to mature quickly and is getting a lot of precious playing experience as Marvin Owens. Here and for the, the first time paper. in our broadcasting <laughs> career, we see toilet paper on the floor. This will take a couple of minutes to clear up, to say the least. They haven't had much to uh, holler about here, Dean, so uh, maybe it should have been expected. John Mulroy is saying, hey, let's get this off the court, guys. Again, Mulroy took over a program. Don Seco had kind of indicated a year ago that he didn't know if he wanted to come back. But he uh, finally, three games into the season, uh, did decide to step down. And Mulroy since then has taken over. But they have won only one ball game. But they have played hard, as the Aces coaches told us. This team will play you very, very hard. And uh, they've been in a couple ball games of late against Butler and, of course, against Loyola just the other night with whom they lost to by four. They also played Michigan State right down to the wire earlier in the season. That was Stacy Johnson throwing it away, or knocking it away. Dan Gottfried puts it in. Wanted to go baseline. Stolen by Brian Hill and a foul on Hill. Hill with the personal. That's the first foul of the ball game. Brian Hill that time. Good anticipation. Uh, just couldn't quite come up with it. Picked up the foul there. Williams will bring it in. 
One, one score already in from the MCC. Xavier beats St. Peter's of New Jersey this afternoon, 78-75. Here's the feed. What, tell us, got a couple people up in the air, and a rebound. Batted away. Hill knocked it away from McKinney, and the Aces will bring it down. We're still deadlocked at two. You saw Marty Simmons lose the ball that time. We'll talk about this a little more as the night goes on. Hafner for three does not get it. We'll, talk, we'll tell you a little bit more about Marty's injury. Uh, not really an injury, but he's having a little trouble with the wrist. Good defense from Scott Hafner, yes. He's had a, he's taking some shots, isn't he? He had a shot earlier in the week to try to get some fluid back on the tendon on his thumb where he broke the bone last year against Kentucky Wesleyan. There's nothing physically wrong with it. It's just the fluid is not flowing in there. It's very sore. So Dan Gottfried has four, Detroit two, and it's a 4-2 ball game. There you saw a very vocal Mr. John Mulroy said, get around him. Uh, you've got to play on top of Dan Godfrey running. A three-point effort missed by Owens. Here's the baseball pass to Dawson. He's alone at the other end, and it's good. Ultra on the break. Ace is opening it up early. I think that's the kind of shot that Owen took that uh, John Mulroy wants. He wants Archie Tullis to get the ball or to get it inside. And they do get it inside here and a foul. It'll be Gottfried's first personal. Jim Cruz talking to his team. Five, three, body foul. You may have remembered him when he played at Oklahoma City. He was a transfer. He made the all-MCC freshman team back in 1984. And he cuts it to a 6-3 UE lead. Owens with his third point. First substitution, Mike Brown coming in for got a little bit of a knee problem. It's been acting up the last couple of games as well. He heard it this summer in a summer league in Cleveland. He's from Garfield Heights playing in, in Cleveland. Hurt it a little bit, but they're hoping to just rest will, will help it. But you, you can't rest too much playing in a basketball season. Simmons for three. He gets it. Marty Simmons first basket. The player of the week in the MCC and Sports Illustrated coming in at 25 points plus with his first three-point basket. Williams on the turnaround. Saved by Detroit. They're having trouble. After the other way to Simmons. And Marty off the window gets the basket. It's a nice save by Simmons, too, the way it looked like it could have been an errant pass. John Mulry wants a timeout. 16-34. Aces open it up early, 11-4. insurance is the first line of safety for their money. Fact is, like all insurance, it's the last resort. You should measure the soundness of your bank the way analysts and bank examiners do, by the capital strength of the bank. Old Nationals is double our nearest competitor, greater than all the others combined. More strength, more resources, more protection. There's safety in numbers with your bank for life. Old National Bank Corp. Sing to your...